The uh, gentlelady from American Samoa, Ms. Radawagon, who's the chairman of the Subcommittee on Health and Technology, is recognized for five minutes. Talofa, good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and the ranking member for holding this hearing today, and thank all of you for testifying today. I represent the I represent the territory of American Samoa, a little jewel of the Pacific. Small business are a little businesses are a little different at home. Almost every family has one. Uh, in fact, 99% of our businesses in American Samoa are small businesses. So there's growing produce or livestock that they sell at the market. These small businesses are our community, our family. This leads me to my first question, both Ms. Johnson Cope and Mr. Foster. Can you talk a little bit about how your companies are helping to invigorate your communities and how successful small firms can have a ripple effect on the surrounding areas in a symbiotic re relationship? Um, American Samoa, our only source of higher education is our local community college. And Ms. Johnson Cope, I see that I see as part of your experience with the 10,000 Small Businesses Program, you mentioned a community college partner, LaGuardia Community College. Would you say that the college was offering courses to their students that would make it easier for you to make that student your next employee? Is the curriculum beneficial for employers? Are they producing graduates with enough skills, or are you finding that you still have to invest resources into training? I'm interested in seeing what I can bring back to my own community college to help develop small businesses in American Samoa. So through the relationship with the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Pro Small Businesses Program, I've had the opportunity to work with Dr. Gail Mello, the, pre the president at LaGuardia Community College. And we've had very uh, extensive discussions on how their curricula can better demonstrate what employers like Johnson Security need in terms of workforce development, in terms of skills and talents. And so to that end, we're looking at creating a special um, security initiative to help better prepare some of my employees, as well as other students that come through the college. The challenge is, um, for the community college environment, there are so many other issues at hand. Um, the, everyone is expected to go to college. There's a, a negative a perception for people who go through community colleges. In many community colleges, there may not be as strong a link to the corporate world, the small business world, and so the, the relationships and the curriculum don't match up on a one-to-one -one basis. But through 10,000 Small Businesses, we're having the opportunity to have those discussions and shape the curriculum that will make a difference. And, and we do see a ripple effect in our community. So as an example, my business is located in the same neighborhood where I grew up. So I have to ha be accountable to my neighbors and the people that remember me as a child. And I can see the difference that we make in that we're putting people to work. We're taking them out of the homeless shelters. We're taking them off of the um, public funding r rosters. And it's making a difference. We can't do it for everyone. And we can't do it without the help of, of, of um, leaders like yourself. Mr. Foster. So our experience is, is twofold. Um, we have the fortunate nature of being on the access to capital side. So um, we are very much engaged with local community organizations that are helping put folks back to work. So uh, one of the organizations that we work closely with is the Joseph House in Cincinnati, which is um, an institution that helps um, veterans that are coming back um, into the workforce um, either find employment and or start their own company. And so on the side of starting their own company, we're helping them put forth access to capital. Um, we're at least helping them uh, with programs to get access to capital ready. On the flip side, the other side of the coin, um, we have a one of the largest minority-owned facility management companies uh, in Cincinnati. And um, of the 120 contract workers that we have, more than half of our folks are from the workforce development startup communities, right? So you have um, those that we're putting back to work um, whether they're um, out of the prison system or um, out of, out of a, a veteran situation. Um, so it gives us the ability to kind of give back to the community in that way through workforce development. Thank you. Mr. Strongen, I just wanted to mention that with regard to at least microfinance uh, business loans out in our uh, neck of the woods, they tend to favor women because they find that the women are the ones who pay their debts. And the men tend to allow their loans to go into arrears. 
I just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> we, Thank we, you, Mr. Chairman. We, we, we have another that. program called 10,000 Women um, that has used that globally quite well. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I Thank yield back.